Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's stand together to worship God. Let's give him a great old clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands and let's open our mouths wide and praise our God. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, then surely our enemies would have had victory. But thanks be unto God who giveth us what? The victory. On behalf of National Church, we are committed to education from the cradle all the way up into senior citizen age. An 89-year-old woman just last year during COVID graduated from the University of Auburn in Auburn, Alabama. And we are just as committed to higher learning. And in the words of the great Frederick Douglass, he said, knowledge makes a slave unkept. American slavery taught us that if you keep folk ignorant, you can control them. But we are grateful for a church that is committed not only to excellence, but education. And I believe that it is not only the pathway to prosperity, but also dignity. And I'm grateful to welcome our own line worshipers. Would you just praise God for our own line worshipers? And I want them to know that this is a worship service. This is not merely an exercise of futility where we're going through the motions, but I believe that this service was designed to minister to you in a way that will bring inspiration, revelation, and we are a Pentecostal church. So this service is always subjugated to the power of Almighty God. I wanna make this announcement before we move any further, James and Jean Easter. This is their 63rd wedding anniversary. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Amen for the Easters. Amen, come on, give them a rousing applause. 63 years they have been married. The honey has dripped off the moon, but the love is still real. We honor you and we thank God for you, Brother Easter. He is so significant to what we do here at National Church. How many of you came to worship the Lord today? How many of you came to praise the Lord today? How many of you did not matter what happened last week? This is the day that the Lord has made and we're gonna rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, prayer will fix it every time. I learned to pray in and out of season, and I don't need a reason to talk to God. And so right now, we're going to ask that great preacher, Dr. Fletcher Wright, to lead us in prayer. And directly after he would have led us in prayer, we will move expeditiously into praise and worship, and then offertorial worships, and then we will receive our announcement from Sister Rosita Akala Asa Brooks. Let's receive in the name of the Lord, amen, Dr. Fletcher Wright to lead us in prayer. Everybody praying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amy would agree on the greatness of our God. If you're going to be connected to a God, pick out one that is the creator of all things. Hallelujah that has everything in his hands, amen. Hallelujah. I wanna read a verse of scripture today that is very familiar and then we're gonna have prayer. And it's out of the book of Jeremiah. And if I told you Jeremiah 29, 11, then probably you would all start quoting that particular verse of scripture. But I want to uh, quote that and we're celebrating not only our graduates today, but we're celebrating you as a child of God. Amen. And this particular scripture was not given when everything was going just right in the lives of the children of Israel. This scripture was given actually when they were in captivity. Now, I'm not going to read the previous uh, scripture there where God begins to instruct them to pray for the city wherein you have been uh, taken captive. For in the uh, peace of your city, you will have peace. But then he went on down in this very familiar verse of scripture. And let me just read it. He said, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. In other words, right in the middle of their captivity, 
God the Father had something to say. Have you know God always has something to say regardless of what's going on in our life? Amen. He said, you may be in captivity now. He said, but my plans for you move you beyond captivity into liberty, into freedom. Amen. Father, we honor you today and we give you praise. Lord, on this very special day, a day of celebrating graduates, yes, but celebrating the child of God. Lord, those that may be encountering problems and difficulties and situations, but Lord, I thank you. Lord, that you are our covenant God, the supplier of every need. Lord, there's not one situation that we will ever encounter that you have not already taken forethought in that situation how to benefit us. And we thank you for that, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, I want us to remember today our own Sister Rhonda Stewart. This coming Tuesday morning, she's going in for surgery. Hey, you know, the Holy Spirit has the ability to go before her. Hallelujah. To prepare the way. To make, the right, make sure the right people are in the right place at the right time. Amen. That that surgery will come forth with great success. And we're believing for a quick recovery, amen. Many of you may have already heard that our own Robert Coates, a young man in our church that had many challenges, but he had literally made a new commitment to the Lord just a number of days ago, but he was killed in a car accident recently. And we're going to be celebrating his home goings and service, I believe, a week from tomorrow. Further announcements will be made, but we want to pray for that family, believe God. And everyone here knows that Marcus Lamb went to be with the Lord. A great man of God, a lot of influence. But let's just believe that God is not going to allow loss to be experienced in that ministry or that family. But God's going to move and work in their lives to bring greater increase in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord today? Do it with all of your heart. God bless you.
yesterday I had to attend the state minister's Christmas banquet DC Delmarva state minister's Christmas banquet yesterday and so I assumed that my keys were in my coat pocket the coat that I had worn yesterday because I couldn't find them in my pocketbook I couldn't find them in the little case that we always put our keys in and so when I got ready to put on my coat and we got ready to go out the door I just assumed that my keys were in my coat pocket. Well, they weren't. And my, we, we opened the front door and there was my key hanging in the lock of the front door. And all somebody had to do was turn it and they could have come on in. They had been hanging there since three o'clock yesterday afternoon, all through the night into this morning, but God. And because, just because, He's God. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. Brother Simon, if you would come on and give us the update on where we are now. Glory to God. In our building fund. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. All right now. We are above $220,000. Can you say thank you? I think it's 204. Is it 204? 204. Sister Roslyn said, we just, let's, we're believing by faith, 220. <laughs> we're at 220. And we're going to thank God right now for being at 220. 2,200. 200,000, 220,000. We're thanking God in advance for being a blessing. I just want to continue thanking you for your generous support of our Bring the Hope Building Fund. And we are so thrilled for your support and participation. Right now we have accomplished and completed several of our projected goals and we want to thank you for continuing to support us uh, one of the sisters in Christ gave me a call two or three days ago and says brother Simons I'm going to give you another check on Sunday morning so I said sister you've already given one she said yeah, I'm going to give another one she talked it over with her husband, and he said, well, I'll write one for a thousand. Then she said, come on, honey, can't we do better than that? So he said, 15, I'm sorry, 1,500, not 1,000, for 1,500. Then she said, she looked at him and he smiled. She said she knew she had him then. So all you sisters in the church, let those husbands know that you want to do even more than you've done right now. And when he smiles, that means he's approved of what you've asked for. So saints, continue to be a blessing to this ministry. Uh, we will continue utilizing the funds the way that we explained and told you that we would use those funds for. And right now, certain areas of the school, the building across the street, uh, especially here, the church side, we are moving in Jesus. And we will continue to move as long as you continue to support us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As you see up there on the screens, that's where your money has gone, amen. To those categories, one, two, three, four, five, six categories, that's where your money has gone. These, that's why some of you are fanning in here right now. Praise the Lord, because we're getting heat. The school has heat. They have thermostats, amen. 
Oh, to God be the glory. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The pastoral wing has heat. Amen. The, we have computers. Oh, to God be the glory for the great things that the Lord is doing through his people. And we know that you're going to continue to bless. We're going to reach that goal of 250,000. I believe God, don't you? I believe God. I believe God. And after we complete all of these basic things, these are the basic things, we're going to go for this roof, amen? We're going to try to get the whole project done, the whole entire roof, not just the sanctuary, but the school, the whole entire property. We need a new roof. So after we complete this, we're going to do that, amen? To God be the glory. And we're going to trust God and believe God because he know, we know that God can do anything and God can supply our need. It's time to give. It's time for your offering. I want to make a couple announcements before we do that. Um, we are having food donations, uh, Christmas food donations, third Sunday through December 19th, okay? Through December 19th, you may give on Givelify for uh, Christmas baskets that we would give out to those who need them, okay? You can also um, write on your envelope for food, okay? If you have an envelope, you can say food, Christmas food, but we would appreciate you giving for those who need those baskets. Amen. I also want to say that December 18th, December 18th is the rehearsal for those participating in the Christmas program on December 19th. December 18th will be the rehearsal at 11 o'clock that Saturday morning. And the very next Sunday will be the Christmas program. We have so many children, teenagers. You're going to be blessed by what you see. Uh, you're going to, I say you're going to be blessed by our children coming forth today. Amen. On that day, you're going to be blessed. And there'll be some adults too. Amen. Some adults, yes. But we are featuring our children and we, we're just excited about it. All right. Are you ready to give? All right. Let us stand. I love that excitement. Let us stand and let's read our proclamation. A proclamation of God's blessings. Let's lead this together. As I honor the Lord God with my substance and the first fruits of my income, I believe that God is opening the windows of heaven on my life and pouring out blessings that I don't have room enough to contain. I believe that the devour is being rebuked and debts are being canceled. I believe that God is giving me the power and creativity to get wealth that his covenant might be established in the land. I believe that God's wisdom concerning all business and financial matters is coming to me as he surrounds me with supernatural favor like a shield. I believe that as I give today, it is being given back to me, good measure. Uh-huh. And running over. I am being blessed so that I might be a blessing to others. Lord, I worship you in my giving today. Come on and worship the Lord in your giving. If you need an envelope, hold your hand up and the usher will bring it to you. I see a hand. I see a hand. Somebody needs an offering envelope. There's another hand over there. Ushers. Anybody else? 
Welcome to the National Church of God, where we are one people worshiping one God. And at National, we are here to serve the spiritual needs of the nation's capital. On behalf of the lead pastor, Bishop Jonathan Ziegler, and the pastoral staff here at National, we want you to know that this is more than a church. We are family. For all of you all over the world watching online through ncglive.com, Facebook, or YouTube, thank you for joining us. And yes, we are still under a countywide mandate to wear our mask indoors. We know that this has been uncomfortable and sometimes difficult, but we appreciate each of you for helping to keep our services safe. Please know that service today is so much better because you are here. Now family, whether you're online or in service, we want to stay spiritually connected with you. So listen in. This is National News Now. Following our service this morning at 10 and our 1130 service for the Latino ministry, Puente de Vida, we want to remind you of our services and resources that are available for you. Our weekly lineup starts with the TNT Tuesday night teaching led by Bishop Jonathan Ziegler. Then, join us for Thursday night Bible class and Friday night prayer service. Both are led by Pastor Fletcher Wright. And both of these services start at 7 p.m. Now, all of these messages can be viewed on ncglive.com, Facebook, and YouTube. And for alerts about these messages, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share on each of these platforms. And you can also join in weekly for corporate prayer. Each Tuesday and Thursday morning and Saturdays at 9 a.m., join us by Zoom or phone for the power of prayer. You can join in again on Thursday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings only. To join by Zoom, enter 862-513-4048, and the password is POWER. And if you'd like to join for insight on-site prayer, there's Wednesday morning prayer at 7.30. So come, but bring your mask. In this season of gratitude, we can't thank you enough for your generosity and dedication. We're grateful for your commitment that you continue to honor your pledge and bring in contributions to the Building Restoration Fund. Every donation, no matter how great or small, is so important. We continue to receive donations as we get closer to our goal, but just know that we are expecting God to do so much more. So once again, thank you so much. Would you like to help bring a smile to a child's face during the holidays? If so, National is participating in the See the Other Side Christmas Toy Outreach Program. We will benefit children living in shelters and those with a parent that is incarcerated. To help, you can drop off a new unopened toy from today through Sunday, November, December, I'm sorry, 19th. For more information, please contact Pastor George Henderson at 301-404-1601. And the NET Ministry would also like to remind you of the ongoing need to support our missions abroad. In conjunction with National Ministries, Fruit of the Holy Spirit Ministries, and PRAY, we are supporting a school in Tanzania, Africa. The students are in great need of supplies such as backpacks, composition books, writing utensils, paper, and more. There are 400 students in grades 1 through 7. If you'd like to help, please contact Pastor Ed Torrance at 202-299-0281 or netncg at hotmail.com. That's netncg at, at hotmail.com. Now, this time of year, many of us move about with excitement and joy for the season. But this time can stir up feelings of sadness, loneliness, and grief. And we want to be here for you. So this coming Saturday, December 11th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., the Open Hearts with Open Hands Support Group Ministry will host a special session called Surviving the Holidays. If you are in need of this special support to cope with the holidays, we encourage you to attend. To do so, please contact Tawanda Carter at 301-646-4749 or Pastor Williamson at 202-437-7046. Next Sunday, December 12th, we will take a moment to honor the valiant effort of the field of medicine and those who have been directly working with patient care and or research related to COVID-19. If you're medical personnel, please join us as we honor the commitment, dedication, and sacrifices that so many of you have made during this crisis. 
On Sunday, December 19th, we are all welcome to join for the special Christmas service featuring the talent of our youth and young at heart. With COVID affecting our abilities to service, to celebrate service last year, we are especially looking forward to this event. And with a special surprise guest artist joining us, this service will be amazing. So bring your family and friends to share in this gift of fellowship. And just a reminder for those participating, there will be a rehearsal Saturday, December 18th at 11 a.m. For more information, please contact Pastor Rosalind Lynch. For some exciting news, you've got to be here for our 2021 Watch Night service. Yes, it's back. And from the explosive praise and worship, a guest recording artist, and a powerful word from none other than our very own Bishop Jonathan Ziegler, this will be the ultimate Friday night praise party. So join us Friday night, December 31st at 10 p.m. The national offices and building will be closed on December 24th, 25th, and December 31st. During this time, we hope that all of our staff and volunteers will take the time to rest and enjoy their families. And last, but certainly not least, if your birthday is this month, we celebrate you. You've waited all year to hear it, and now we say happy birthday to you. And happy birthday to Jesus. So, now you've heard the news. So let's worship. diminished. 
He left his disciples and all believers in charge to turn the hearts of sinners to God. The law has need of you to explain the plan of salvation through so that others will come in faith and to Christ relate. The Lord has need of you to carry out the plans in a sinful land. Will you submit to God and stand? Stand for righteousness before the world ends and deliver humanity out of their sin. God has left the Christian in charge to occupy until he comes. It doesn't matter if you're red, yellow, black, or white. God wants you to be a victorious winner in this fight. So do your job and do it well and prevent souls from going to hell. Amen. the Lord. Oh, but my spirit will not always strive. Oh, yes. Lord, I love you. Let me assure you this day, it was the Lord who was speaking. 43 years ago, I gave my life to the Lord. 43 years ago, God put his word in my mouth. And when he said preach, I preach. When he said prophesy, I prophesy. So know this day, I didn't just decide to get up to hear myself or for you to see. The Bible said it is better for you not to have a tongue than to say thus said the Lord. And he did not say. So I take it serious. The Lord has spoken. Hearken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the Lord, sis. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
that I will bow down and worship Him. Bow down and worship. Hallelujah. Worship Him. Bow down and I will worship Him. Jesus, bow down and work. Thank you, G. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Allow me to breathe in your presence, God. Thank you, Jesus. I give myself away to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. gigantic, dreadful, and more carnivorous lion than themselves. The type of one-eyed giants of uh, Odysseus, Odyssey. On the other hand, Daniel is there feeling so miserable about himself and wondering too what the issue is that the lions are not devouring but looking on. That is just what happens when the power of God is at work. We all marvel at his existence. Hallelujah. So I, like many would, walk into National Bible College and seminary looking so fragile, feeble, and insecure. I remember our first class with Dr. Edridge and Dr. Hall. The number of pages we had to read, the time to turn in assignments, coupled with the more than one hour drive to and from school twice a week, we were overwhelmed. Pastor Charles, you were so encouraging, telling me we will get there. I thank you for your constant words of encouragement. We wondered if this day would ever show up, especially because of our work schedules, family obligations, and charge timetables. Today, 
We are witnesses to the force of the wind and the overwhelming power of our God's grace. Amen. <laughs> Permit me to recognize those who, who God had chosen and commissioned distinguishedly to make our stand here at this podium commendable. They are genesis and prayer warriors of this seminary. We appreciate you, the insightful, diligent, and inspiring professor, Dr. Mrs. Sharon L. Evans Eldridge, who also doubles as the dean of the seminary. Thank you for your dedication and steadfastness. We appreciate the prayer warrior, dedicated, energetic, and untiring educator, mother, and inspiring professor, Dr. Catherine Cabo. We appreciate you, the cool, assertive, and insightful go-getter, Professor Dr. Melissa Vickery. Think she's not here? Please applaud her. We do appreciate all the teachers who left before we could complete our program. The distinguished Dr. Melvin Hall and Dr. Evans Glover. A shout to our pushful, energetic, prayer warrior, the only, the one and only registrar, Mrs. Lolita Johnson. She made this happen. Thank you. If I've left out any, they are all geniuses, I told you. They are wonderful people. These faculty and staff on whom we, of, um, sorry, on whom is incumbent the existence of the seminary are exemplary, dedicated, and insightful. We thank you all very sincerely and pray that the good Lord will richly bless you. We won't be overdoing this, and with all due respect and permission, I employ all of us to stand and give the seminary a standing ovation. Please, just stand and give them a standing ovation. Thank you, thank you very much. They are God-given, driven workers of his vineyard. The choice of NBCS came to me not through adverts or the usual talk about things. I had not the idea of studying more about the Bible, but not actually taking a degree in the course. Reason, I just wanted to be serviceable in my church clubs and Bible study groups. Then God did it through my sister, mentor, and colleague, the Reverend Dr. Lee Spears. She's here. Come on. I salute you. She forced the whole idea down my throat, and I reluctantly swallowed it. <laughs> Much appreciation go to my wonderful kids, Desmond, Sharon, Victor, and Jason who kept the flame burning with messages of encouragement. Thank you. My grandkids, the twin boys, Joseph and Joshua. Yes, they came up much later and have been very inspiring. There were nights when the guys were all over me, one on my back, the other climbing on my laps while I had a paper to turn in before midnight. I don't have room to call on all the wonderful people who stood by me, but we humbly acknowledge our family and friends who have been the backbone of our achievements. When we look back, we can attest that the choice of NBCS was the best choice we made as students. Besides a wonderfully dedicated and knowledgeable faculty, the tuition is very affordable comparatively, and every student has the elasticity to stretch out the payments. Amen? What would, 
What would cause financial hardship for someone who has a job would be the compoundment of family and other obligations. We also appreciate the space. The climate is very conducive for learning, and never has there been a case of insecurity about the school. Hallelujah. Rather, our drawbacks will come from other sources. Worth mentioning is that every great result is the product of very great obstacles. My stay at NDCS has not been without hitches, with low and high moments. At one point, I felt like this was not the only way to be of service to the Lord because of the horrid oppositions and false accusations I experienced. My problems did not come from the seminary, no. They came tumbling on my head from the very pulpit and the pews where I worship and kept me profoundly lost as I came face to face with disapproval, dissatisfaction, disrespect, and defamation of character. I fell downtrodden, downsized, demoralized, and determined to quit. Then I experienced the power of prayer. The prayer warriors, the prayer warriors of this seminary came in and with the force of the wind blowing me not necessarily where I wanted to go. My family and friends kept the flame burning too. Here I am today, full of vigor, validated, victorious, and the valedictorian of a graduating class of 2009. All praise to God. So many have been individual hitches, and we kept on, and we made it. Amen. We have accomplished license, then what next? The world is out like a forest with one basic entrance, but there is a roaring lion waiting to devour, destroy, kill and steal if it must. But the time is now. We must not put on God's, we must put on God's armor to face the challenges of this world that makes the spread of the gospel difficult. As we walk out of here today, we go out to serve in every capacity. While we look forward to great achievements, we will continue to need your guidance, our teachers, family, and friends. You all know Rome wasn't built in a day. Nurturing doesn't stop. However, like every awaited pregnancy, the world is anxious to see and hear of the great things that will be happening. On behalf of my fellow graduates and myself, I will answer to the call. Whom shall I send? Oh, Father, send me. Hallelujah. Thank you. God is good. Oh, God is good. And all the time, our God is good. Minister Sana, God bless you so much. You said it all, and I don't know what to share. <laughs> good morning, faithful people of God. It's my humble honor to stand here today with joy in my heart. I don't know how many Victoria we have today for 2021. <laughs> Graduating students, we have much to be thankful. As Michelle Obama once said, we learn about gratitude and humility that so many people had a hand in our success. People of God, join us to say a big thanks to the president of National Bible College and Seminary, the Board of Trustees, 
faculty members, oh my God, they are awesome. I remember the very faithful day after class that I have to drop one of our faculty members in DC at bus station. Was it train station, rather? Thank you so much for your sacrificial work, Dr. Cabo, Dr. Edridge. You guys are awesome. Non-teaching staff, not Mason, Miss Lolita, you are awesome. Thank you for your wise counsel, your spiritual insight. God bless you, and we believe God will use you to touch more students. Our security guards, janitors, not forgetting our parents, guests, and loved ones who are sharing this exciting moment with us. We want to say God bless you. We appreciate your measurable support and contribution in our life. Here at National Bible College and Seminary, we have received a great education, not only for our respective ministries, but a holistic education that has prepared us to meet the challenges of the world. There is no doubt in my heart to say that we are living in a mess up world, a world where the moral fiber of our society is being stretched and torn apart to its outer limit where it is very difficult to even proclaim your own faith in public, let alone to evangelize in marketplaces and uh, at public arenas. Despite all that, I am very optimistic and convinced that we have been called and prepared by this great institution to move on and to take on whatever challenges comes on our way as Christ's ambassadors. as Mordecai urged Esther to take action. Point her to a higher purpose, saying, who knows whether you have attained this royalty for such a time like this. Fellow graduates, I believe this is the very moment we are most needed as soldiers of the gospel of Christ. To step out with bold and confidence, as Apostle Paul said, that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of boldness to proclaim and to win soul for Christ. There are many things going on in our world. We are living in a chaotic world. But trust me, the only solution to our world is our Lord Christ Jesus. Christ is the only solution. By Christ is missing in the equation. As Dr. David Jeremiah would say, Christ is the apex of all reality. And I believe that. Fellow graduates, I know we all have touching stories to share today, but time will not permit us. I believe the adversity and storm we all pass through to reach today's graduation moment. I personally remember the day and the time I have to quit my job because of the rough schedule to get enough time and space to complete my final year. I have no option but to opt to drive for Uber because of the gospel so burning in my heart. Drove Uber to complete my Bible college. <laughs> but here I am today, I'm not driving Uber. I work with the state of Virginia, the Department of Correction touching life over there. I wrote books, two books to my credit. One was one of the fastest searching books in Amazon, it was placed on number five. I have one yet more to launch, and I believe I'll talk to the president. I can launch the book right here. Praise God. Not only that, after school, I served as associate pastor at the Victory Assemblies of God in Lawton, as a touching life, evangelizing, doing great for the kingdom of God. I believe God is not yet done with us, graduating students of 2021. God has a lot to do with us. In concluding my message, I want us to know that God did not take us through this tough time for nothing. There are much more for us to achieve for the kingdom. The goal command in the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, the verse number 19, go is a command. And it's not only for our Ministers, our graduating student, it's a command for every believer. 
According to the research done by Georgetown University, 26 million people die each every year in the world. 178,000 each day, 7,425 each hour. 120 die each minute. People of God, we have no time to waste. I ask myself, where are all these souls going? And I want you to ponder over it, where are all these souls going? I want to challenge each and everyone here, this is the time for us to go out and evangelize for Christ. This is the time to depopulate hell and populate heaven. May the good Lord bless us. May the Lord grant us grace to finish this tax in Jesus' name. Thank God, I thank everyone, thank my family who are here with me. Ed Berimaji, my and wife, my mom from Richmond, and all our loved ones, all we can say, God bless each and everyone. God bless you all. I'm coming to praise God and I'm coming to celebrate. Celebrate these graduates and really everybody in the room because we are breathing. Praise the Lord. I thank God for being here. I thank God for who he is in my life and just this opportunity. I thank God for the pastor and the president and my beloved husband who's in the audience. Wave, honey. I want them to see you. Okay. He drove me here, so I thank God for him. And, and the family and friends that's here, every single person, I thank you. God knows we were going to be here. And my job now, right now, is to give you a charge or an encouragement. So God gave me a scripture, but I'm not going to preach or nothing. I'm just going to give a preacher. Okay? But when I said, when she, Sister Lolita said, we want you to just like, Lord, me? <laughs> no, I just like, yes. So I got three or four points, maybe five. Again, short. So first, seriously, it is. The first one is, don't ever forget to keep praising God. Always. He knows. Isaiah 25 and 1 he says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things. Things planned long ago. Hello. He got it. And all you got to do is just praise them. It's going to come through. All right, number two, don't, don't ever forget seeking God's knowledge and intelligence. Proverbs 18, 15, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Seek it, and you know you'll find it in him. Number three, you got a light. Matthew 5, 14, it says, let your light you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. Everybody really, but especially you guys today, because we're celebrating you. So I want that you to know, let your light so shine before men that they'll see the good works in you, and then they'll glorify God. All you got to do is let your light shine. That's all. Is that hard? I don't think so. God's got it. Number four. And this is really the last one, I think, but I believe so. I encourage you to press forward. Keep moving forward, as Paul said in Philippians 3.14. I encourage you to go forward, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Move in the direction that God has planned for you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Move through it. It might not be easy, but he's got you. And when God has you, there's nothing impossible. With man, it might be impossible, but with God, it's not. Hang on, praise him, press forward, always seek knowledge. Because my prayer for you is that in this in Psalms 2014, that God will give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans successful. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of capital on there. Sometimes we might plan something that may not feel like it's God's will or whatever, but that prayer is, Lord, if it's not your will, change that desire, and he'll do it. Oh, yes, he will. So be encouraged and press forward, and that's my charge to you. God bless you. Good morning, National Church of God, National Bible College and Seminary, Bishop Jonathan Ziegler, and the graduating class of 2021. Greetings in the name of the Lord. 
I am so proud of you and so excited for you all today to be celebrating your graduation. I know many of you worked countless hours studying, preparing, writing exams, writing quizzes, discussion posts, papers, and countless other requirements to be, get to this point today. And I'm so proud of you. You've overcome an economic recession. You've overcome a pandemic. You've overcome global shutdowns and countless other obstacles. And yet you're still here. You're still standing. I'm so proud of you for making it this far. I want to encourage you as a body of believers and as a graduating class to not grow weary with well-doing. Even though you are graduating at this time, I want to encourage you to continue with your studies. You wouldn't want a doctor, as Bishop Martin Taylor had told us when we were finishing up our minister's exam back in 2006, you wouldn't want a doctor who obtained their degree in the 70s operating on you based on knowledge that they obtained in the 70s. So I encourage you, just as you'd want a doctor who's up on the latest and greatest in medical technology in the 21st century, to make sure that you're up on the latest and greatest is what's going on in the body of Christ and what's going on in the church world and being able to be knowledgeable about your studies and religious studies. Don't grow weary with well-doing. Keep the faith. And remember, as Norman Vincent Peale once said, shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you'll be among the stars. So I just want to encourage you as a body of believers and as a graduating class, keep the faith. Don't grow weary with well-doing. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I am so proud of you. And I congratulate you on behalf of the faculty at the National Bible College and Seminary. Yours truly, Reverend Dr. Melissa Vickery. Be blessed always. Praise God. Praise the living God. Give all the glory to him. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. I repeat, the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. He was standing right here whilst the dancers were going up and down with a very beautiful smile. I couldn't just sell. And it was just around that time that the prophetess started giving the prophetic. So it came to underscore the presence of God. We are blessed, and the Lord is good. Today marks a memorable season in the history of this honorable um, seminary and in the lives of the graduates. The rich history of this unique seminary dates back to the 80s, in the golden days of this seminary, and indeed the Church of God. Those were the days where 12 states would just register ministers to come and take their studies here. Those were the days that 20 and above foreign nations would release their ministers to come to National Bible College and Seminary. Those were the days we look back and we call the golden days. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
Those days are going back into this generation. We are claiming it back in the name of Jesus Christ. So then, the World Education Center is just about to accelerate into the 20th century and beyond to the glory of God. Jesus says something that is very unique. And he said, I no longer call you servants because servants do not know what their master's businesses are. Instead, I call you my friends for everything, everything that I learned from my father, everything I've made known unto you. You didn't choose me. I chose you and appointed you so that you will bear fruit, that your fruit will last and remain. So then, whatsoever, whatsoever, no limit, whatsoever, you will ask the Father in my name shall be granted unto you. This is the key, and we are holding on to it like nobody's business, that from today, whatsoever, this does not apply to the grand ones alone, but to all believers, including all of us here. We will always remember to be faithful. Whenever we are under pressure, Whenever we feel crushed, wherever we get into dark alleys, we must always know the powerful place of transformation is where we are. You can't get good olive oil without pressing. But you have to be careful you don't crush the seed. Rabba Sota Karayama Kasiti. Reka Baba Baba Sota. In the name of Jesus Christ, no pressure from the east or from the west, from satanic forces, principalities, powers of darkness will crush the good seed in you and I. In the name of Jesus Christ. The best oil will come out. And from today, God is giving you the oil of ease. Ease. This is the anointing that the Lord is releasing this morning. The oil of ease. Once you struggled, but from today, he's going to walk you. He's going to walk you through. Hallelujah. I decree and prophesy. In the name of Jesus Christ, regardless of the pandemic and all societal obstacles, including financial challenges, National Bible College and Seminary, National Academy, National Church of God, you are growing from strength to strength. No turning back, no obstacle, you have the anointing of ease. Don't look back, look forward. You cannot drive forward looking in your rear mirror. Focus, trust, and the Lord will do the rest. Hallelujah. I decree and prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, Whatsoever was on the heart of God when he established National Church of God and made it possible for this seminary to come into being and other institutions and ministries under this ministry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is watching over. He is watching over so this institution, the church of God, and all ministries under will be one of the best astounding in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
to serve the peculiar purpose of this generation and generations to come. Thank you, Jesus. I decree and prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. Just as the proverbial agrabies of the Nubian world is known not to rattle, doesn't make noise, it's the sterling beans, the beads that are mined just like gold is mined. They come unique. They come unique in their own unique beauty. They don't rattle. They don't make noise. Hallelujah. May that kind of quality be that of National Bible College and Seminary and all the ministries on the Church of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. These are the marks of excellence. The finger of God at works. The Holy Spirit distinction, brilliance, and nobility at work through our Savior Jesus Christ. And now to you graduates, on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ, the leadership of National Bible College and Seminary and faculty, in the name of Jesus Christ, please can you be upstanding, graduates, with all due respect, this is for you. Thank you, Jesus. Just as it's required of stewards to be faithful, so you are going to be faithful to your heavenly assignments in the power and wisdom of God. You are unstoppable from today in the name of Jesus Christ. You are unstoppable. Anyone who touches you have touched fire. Anyone who touches you have touched live wire. And live wire electrocutes. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall attain the height. You will excel and succeed in all your God given assignments. In the name of Jesus, you are unstoppable. I decree and declare and prophesy, appealing to the Supreme Court of Heaven, that all your plans, all your ambition, even those you have buried, may God pull them up, activate them, and accelerate you onto the heights he destined before he created you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And now I decree and declare Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 14 over you. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which he commands you today, that your God will set you above the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall be upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord. Blessed are you in the city, and blessed are you in the country. Blessed are you and the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herbs, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock. Blessed are you and your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed are you when you come out, and blessed are you when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rose against you, who rise against you, who shall rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way. They shall flee in seven different ways. The Lord will command blessings on you and on your storehouse. The Lord will set his hand upon you. He will bless your land. He will bless your home. He will bless your generation. And you shall be called a blessing. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as you have sworn, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. 
Then all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. They shall be afraid of you. I repeat, they shall be afraid of you. They shall reroute when they see you coming. They either give their lives to Christ or reroute in Jesus' name. And the Lord shall grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord has sworn to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open his treasures unto you. The heavens will give you rain. Oh, you will enjoy the fruit of your seasons. You will be blessed and you shall be a blessing. You shall lend to nations. You shall never borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. When you heed the commandments of the Lord, which he commands you today, be careful to observe all. The master key is now with you, graduates, and your success has already been established in heaven. As it is in heaven, must be done on earth. It is now your duty to let what has been declared come to fruition. God bless you. Amen. You may take your seat. Every time I come in this church, I, I praise God for that sign. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And especially for our graduates, it's your time. We are going to now present to you your diploma. And by the authority invested in me by Bishop Ziegler, and the National Church of God Board of Trustees, I ask you to rise. I'm going to turn the microphone over to our dean of our college, Dr. Etheridge, who will present to you your diplomas. Um, we'll go this way since we have a real, yes, Dr. Eldridge. Miss Bridget Peterson, would you come forward, please? We recognize her. She's not here, but. Mr. Akin Akinbo, would you come forward, please? Can you give him a round of applause, please? Thank you. You recognize me. Mr. Myron Ward. Reverend Antoinette Walker.
Mr. Tashimi Magari. Mrs. Bridget Asana. Mr. Willie White. I might add that each one of these students are special. I'm not calling out what their degrees are in, but know that they have done extremely well. Mr. Charles Yabro. That concludes uh, this part. So thank you. And again, congratulations to each and every. Praise our God. Give them another good God bless you. Come on, let's clap our hands and thank God for these outstanding individuals who have completed a life achievement that I believe is very noteworthy. Come on, let's do it. Come on, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. We praise God for one another. We rise, we fall, we fight, we believe with one another, for one another. If God be for us, who can be against us? What a mighty God we serve. Please be seated. Listen, the hour is well spent. I'll never use the word far spent. It is well spent. And I believe that our great president and our great trustee member, Dr. Marcus J. Newsom has a word that he will impart into our spirit. Lift your right hand and say, nothing is complete without a word from the Lord. And I am not going to go into his biographical sketch of achievements. His lovely wife is here. We want his wife to stand. Stand up, Lady Newsom. Come on, clap your hands for this very beautiful, educated Nubian queen. God bless you, woman of God. I want you to lift your right hand. I promise you, the man of God will not be too terribly long, but it will be a timely word that will bless your heart. Would you lift your right hand and would you warmly receive with a national church welcome, our very own Dr. Pastor Marcus J. Newsom. Come on, clap your hands and receive this great man of God. Amen. I would say that's more than a hint. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, as I was sitting there, I said, we have heard from five incredible ministers today. And so you don't need a long message. But I'm just going to ask you, uh, I'm going to make the same request that Jesus made. 
in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. He said, just pray with me for a little while. Just a little while. I promise you it's not going to be long, but I believe that God has um, put on my heart a message that if it gets into your spirit, it will change your life from this day forward. Give honor to whom honor is due. We honor these graduates today. If you see their bios, these are incredible ministers of God. We honor our bishop today. My bishop. You know, most pastors I know would rather give their right arm up than give up their pulpit at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I, I thank you. I am humble that you have um, uh, given this opportunity. Uh, all the work that goes on behind the scenes that you don't even know, the media workers and the ushers and the worship group who come in early while you're still sleeping to be prepared for you. And you've heard from the ministers of this Bible college. Um, you know, it's a shame that a prophet is without honor in his own home. And we don't have any national folks who are standing up here right now. But I pray that the next graduating class, that we'll see some of our own people who will be coming across this stage. And uh, lastly, um, I have to give honor to, to my family. Uh, my, my wife has already been recognized, but um, my elder brother and his wife are here. My daughter, her husband, and my son are here. And my two grandsons are here. And um, today is my oldest grandson's birthday, Jason. I want all of you to stand up. Stand up. Say happy birthday, Jason. Uh, you've been sitting for quite a while. I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the scripture. Uh, we have two scriptures I'd like to share with you. Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. That's a short scripture for a short message. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, those first few words would change anybody's life. In the beginning, God. But the next few words, God created the heavens and the earth. And look at that, heavens has an S on it, which means it's plural, which means more than one. You know, I, I hear preaching all the time, when I get to heaven, but heavens is mentioned in the Bible over a hundred times. Second scripture, I'd like for you to read along with me this time. Uh, next scripture should be uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 39 through 41. 1 Corinthians. Okay, well, if you have your Bibles or you have your cell phone, follow along with me. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of terrestrial is one, and the glory of the celestial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, and for one star different from another star. One star different from another star in glory. You may be seated. See, my glory is not Alan Mason's glory. I can't play the organ like that. Or Brother Hill's glory or Bishop Ziegler's glory. And your glory is not my glory. And that's some of the trouble that we get in. We try to be something that we're not. God, as you heard in the reading of the scripture this morning, has a plan for each one of you and he's given each one of you a special glory. So I think back that when I was a little boy 
and I'm sure all of you have done this. Um, when I was going to school in kindergarten in upstate New York, my dog walked me to school. You know, the kids don't get to walk to school today for the most part. But I would gaze up at the, the clouds. Anyone ever do that? And I was looking for something specific up there. I was looking to see God's face. Anyone ever, as a child, look to see God's face in the clouds? And you see different formations, and you say, there he is. There he is at five years old. So when I was a, a child, I had this tremendous imagination, and I was very inquisitive. And my older brother will tell you, I asked questions about everything. Why is Popeye eating that spinach? Why is Mighty Mouse doing that? Why did Amos say that to Andy? <laughs> but there was a movie that came on once a year. It was first published as a book as a child's fantasy in 1900 and premiered on television in 1939 called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. We're all familiar with that movie where the major character, Dorothy, and her pet, Toto, were captured up in a tornado. And they landed in this land foreign to them, a land beyond the rainbow. And Dorothy had one wish, which was to get back home. And the people in the land, this strange land, said, well, if you go to Oz to see the wizard, he'll grant your wish. All you have to do is follow this yellow brick road. So along she goes off to the yellow brick road and she meets three friends along the way. First she meets the scarecrow. The scarecrow wants a brain. She says, come with me, meet Oz, he'll grant you a brain. Then she meets the tin man. He wants a heart, come with us. The wizard will grant you your heart. And finally, she meets the cowardly lion. He wants courage. Come with us. The wizard will grant you courage. All things that every person wants. And so, once they finally do everything that the wizard asked them to do, which basically was to bring the witch's broom uh, to them, the, he granted their wish. So the first to receive his wish was the scarecrow. And I'm going to try to remember what he said. It was something like this. <clears throat> so you want a brain. Well, that's a mediocre commodity. Everybody has a brain. Every creature that crawls upon the earth or that slides through slimy seas has a brain. But they have one thing that you don't. Where I come from, they have great universities, places where men go to become great thinkers. And when they leave the university, they think deep thoughts. And they have something that you don't, but now you do. They have a diploma. <laughs> they have a diploma. And so the, the uh, wizard says, by the authority vested in me, I grant you a diploma, and the scarecrow validates his uh, knowledge now by talking about the hypotenuse and then the isosceles triangle. And so he says, the square root of any two sides of a isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the other side. Basically, he says all three sides are equal. So, what's the message for you? Well, first thing, the wizard had one thing right, that the universities grant degrees, but in this case, it was an honorary degree. Now, honorary degree can be given for many reasons, for someone who has great accomplishments, someone who um, provides the university with money, and so in many ways, you can buy an honorary degree. But you cannot buy what these young people just 
earn at National Seminary. They earned a degree after many years of service. It's bounded on sound doctrine, the study of the Word of God. You heard them. They have been led by the Holy Spirit. And I would declare to anyone in here who's got a degree that your degree is only as good as your service to God. You see, the scarecrow was kind, generous, and, courage, uh, and courageous before he got his degree. The degree was just validation of what was already there. Your degree is just validation of what God has already put into you, the plan. But now, the world, just as we get baptized and we identify with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection so the whole world can see, your study has validated that you are now equipped. You move beyond milk, but you are, are full of strong meat and ready for the strong meat and to share the strong meat of the Word of God. So, getting back to this story of the wonderful Wizard of Oz, like Dorothy, I wondered about the rainbow. Six colors in the rainbow, three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, three secondary colors, green, purple, and orange, and every rainbow has the same three colors, all in the same order, no matter what part of the world you're in. And I wondered, how did God do that? Well, today, man has perverted that rainbow. See, God sent that rainbow as a covenant of his mercy to mankind and a promise to mankind. The world is now taking that rainbow and turned the White House into a rainbow to mean something completely different from what God intended. And everything that God has done, the world has tried to pervert it. This holiday that we're getting ready to celebrate, man has tried to commercialize it. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The world represents, uh, uh, tries to distract us with a bunny. So this, this rainbow and what's beyond that rainbow, last thing, about, uh, that used to um, cause me curiosity is, is um, I think my brother may remember this, we used to lay on the ground at night and look up at the stars. Anyone ever do that? Our young children don't know too much about that. And I would wonder what was out there in those stars. Anybody wonder that? Dorothy wondered, and she sang this song Somewhere over the rainbow, yep. there's a land that I've heard of, once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. She goes on to say, someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops, way above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me. And if happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why then, oh, why can't I? I think about that song because uh, <clears throat> my daughter, who used to be a songstress here when she was a child and a teenager, first time she ever sang on the stage, she sang that song at nine years old, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. But there's a gospel version of that. And it goes something like this. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shores. I'll fly away. When the shadows of life have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars have flown, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days, and then I'll fly away. To a land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, Lord Jesus. I'll fly away. 
I want to um, really get to the climax here, and um, I'm just going to summarize those four wishes, and then I'm going to give you a glimpse into my imagination that I doubt that any one of you have ever seen before, except perhaps maybe the men in the men's fellowship, because I've shared it with them. But you know, the scarecrow got his brain. My father, who will be 97 years old on Christmas Eve, I tried to get him to come to church with me today. He said, I'll watch you on TV. I'll... <laughs> Every day I tell him that I'm going to church, he says, pray for me. One day I said, what do you want me to pray, Dad? He says, pray that God will keep my mind. I pray that every day, too. The scarecrow wanted a brain. In Isaiah 26, 3, God will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in him. Everybody wants, if you ever been around someone who doesn't have their mind, you praise God for your mind. And my mother passed from, from complications of Alzheimer's, and I tell you, it's a terrible disease. I thank God for a sound mind. Number two, the tin man wanted a heart. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26. The lion wanted courage. And for anybody who says that they aren't afraid of anything, why, did, why does the Bible and God always tell his people, fear not? Right? Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that go with thee and will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And finally, this is the thing that I was always curious about. Dorothy wanted a home. She wanted to go back home, but you know that this is not a home. This is not a home, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, heavens, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. So, when I looked in heaven, and I think about the heavens, God created celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Celestial bodies are the bodies here in the Earth's atmosphere and realm. To, uh, terrestrial bodies are those out of the Earth's atmosphere. So I found this, um, this video that's called the universe. I'm sorry. Um, it goes beyond the universe. It's called the multiverse. So there are universes and then there are multi-universes. And we are not even a microcosm speck in the scheme of things. Yet, your glory is not my glory. And there's a glory in the heavens. And I believe, the Bible says, tells us that I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has planned for those who love them. So as, as great as my imagination is, and as great as your imagination may be, you were not designed to even comprehend what God has for you. And so what I have for you is just a glimpse of what the universe looks like. And then just imagine what the heavens can provide for you in that great getting up morning. Can we see the video? How great. Just how great, just how great is our God. 
So these are measurements of kilometers that we'll just call the mile. finally got into a light year. This is just one universe. not even begun. God's infinity hasn't even begun. It continues to go. So the question is, how great is our God? Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has. There are heavens beyond anything that we can imagine. And this is called the multiverse. God has something, God has something that you know not of. There's something that we don't know or understand. It's greater than our comprehension. Can we stand and say, how great is our God?
how great is our God. Let's give the Lord praise everybody everywhere. What a mighty God we serve. We have certainly been blessed and challenged in the level of engagement of our great Christian education leader. He has communicated with our intellect, but not only that, our emotions, we laughed, we have cried, we have worshiped, but now it's time for somebody to make a real decision. And I believe that there is nothing, there is no greater choice. There is no other choice. My mom used to sing a song, there is no way I could live without Christ. And I want those of you that have felt what you felt and you know it to be something like peace, like joy, like the goodness of God. When I came and ever there's a prophecy in this church and I thoroughly enjoyed the prophecy of this great woman of God, Minister Glenda, and I enjoyed the prophecy, I believe, from Dr. Carew. I enjoyed that prophetic word. And I believe that God is speaking to somebody in this room. And if you need to make a decision today based on your eternalness, I want you to just lift your hand. If you're in the balcony, I've heard the word. I've heard and felt the Spirit of God, and I want to do something about my soul today. I want to do something about my spirit. I want to do something about my heart and my mind. Would you just lift your hands? I believe everybody ought to lift their hands. And I want us to pray, and I want to pray for you. And then we're going to end this service. We're going to pray for our president. We're going to pray for our Christian education leader and his family. And I want you to pray with me. I want everybody to pray with me. And I want you to earnestly pray. You got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the Bible said you shall be saved. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, the word has been preached. Not only has the word been preached, but the spirit has manifested amongst us, your people. The yokes are being destroyed. Burdens are being removed. The power of darkness is being rebuked and beat back. Somebody is making a decision. A decision about sin to salvation. And God, only you can heal and deliver and set free. Only you can break bondages. Only you can save and wash a sin-sick soul. And it's only by the blood of Jesus. It's only by by the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. Now would you repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of feeling despair and the dysfunctionality of my life. And I need you. I need you. I love you. I confess that I have sinned. And I confess a need for salvation. I believe that you died. Would you say it? I believe you died. I believe you rose. And I believe you're coming back again. I repent of my sins and I ask for your sweet forgiveness only God can forgive only God can secure only God can heal and today
today we accept healing we accept forgiveness we believe today is the day of a great change and a great transformation would you just lift your hands and begin to praise the Lord everybody begin to praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever God bless you I want to ask our president family I want to ask them to come down his brother his dear sweet wife, his daughter, I want all of them to come down. And I want everybody in this church to stretch your hand. Come on down, President. Amen. Marcus Newsom is a jewel. He is not only a jewel, but he's an honorable man, a man of God. I admire him for not only being a great father, a great husband, a great brother, a great confidant in ministry. But this man takes care of his father every day of his life. And I believe that that is admirable and that is noteworthy. And how you treat your mother and father, I believe that has a lot to do with length of days. And I want to pray for his dad today that God would keep his mind. Would you pray for the entire Newsom family, the patriarch? Come on, everybody stretch your hand toward this committed family this great family. Father, we pray for our president. We pray for his wife. We pray for his dad. We pray that the blood of Jesus would touch his mind and keep his mind in perfect peace. Lord, we pray, Lord, that the blessings of the book of Deuteronomy would come upon them. And we pray that everything that they touch, every endeavor, every business practice, that you would bless it and multiply it. God, we thank you for keeping them from sickness and keeping them from disease and keeping them from hurt, harm, danger, or anything that Satan would throw at them. Satan, we call you defeated. We say you're a liar, you're a murderer, and you will not cross the bloodline. We put a blood covering over this family. They are in covenant with God, and you are the covenant keeping God for a thousand generations. Generations. God, keep them from cancer. Keep them from disease. Give them rest. Give them sleep. Give them power. Give them endurance. Every prophetic word that's been spoken over their lives, bring it to pass. And as we pray for their family, we pray for your family. Begin to call out the names of your sons and daughters. Everybody praying. Lord, bless my children. Bless Bless my son, Jaden. Lord, strengthen him. Bless him intellectually. Bless him spiritually. Bear them up on eagle's wings and keep them from evil. We pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge our territory. Bless us indeed and keep us from pain. Now lift your hands and just begin to praise God. Begin to praise God that your steps have been ordered by God. Not only have your steps been ordered, but your life is secure in God. There's no God like Jehovah. Holy Spirit, do a new thing in every family. Bind up the brokenhearted. And I want you right now, I don't know why, but I'm praying for forgiveness in families, for bridges instead of fences. Lord, let there be bridges for old hurts and old arguments and old wounds and old dysfunctionality. We bind it in the name of Jesus and we thank you for the love of God flowing in families. Satan, your time is up. Dysfunction, your time is up. Depression, your time is up. Suicidal thoughts and generational curses. And today, generational blessings flow in every family. Oh, God, hallelujah. Lord, speak generational blessings in the name of Jesus generational prosperity and wealth generational health and wholeness and wellness exercise and proper dieting in the net lord do it and we give you praise and we give you glory now just wave the last five years of your life goodbye 
and we press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now thank him for that promotion. Thank him for that open door. Thank him for that blessing. Thank him for that miracle. Thank him for every trial. Thank him for every tribulation. Thank him for every storm that he brought you through. Somebody clap your hands and praise the give me all you got. Give me all you got. We serve a great God who's working on your behalf. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody reach up and thank him for your miracle. Thank him for your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, when you pray for somebody else's family, God will start moving in your family. When you celebrate somebody else, God will smile on you. You don't get anything for hating folk or being jealous or envious. When you lift folk, God will lift you. And can't nobody do it like God. Oh, God bless you. We go, man. Listen. It Listen, the Holy Ghost is in this place, and you thought it was just going to be pomp and circumstances, but woman of God, I feel like God is telling us, a wind is blowing through our families, and we're going in, oh my God, we're going into 2022, declaring they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We're going in 2022. We've been through COVID. We're still going through it. But God let us live. And we're going to praise him. For 30 seconds, just praise him. Hit that symbol, just praise him. Well, well go ahead. Go ahead, Auntie. Praise him, Auntie. Well, praise him, Auntie. The graduate done started shouting. Oh! Hiya, hiya! Here my shot, the Wait a minute, wait a minute. My, my dad went to a historic black college, Savannah State, down in Georgia, and I remember a story of a Tuskegee University graduation. And this one woman name was Johnson, and another woman was Jones, and they didn't even know each other, but they were sitting in this great big auditorium, and Dr. Benjamin Mays from Morehouse was the speaker, and they were calling out the names of the graduate. Miss Johnson, her daughter died. Miss Jones, her daughter died. And the grandmothers raised single boys, mopping folk floors, cleaning folk houses and got those children through Tuskegee and they called out the name Willie Johnson and they called out the other name Brian Jones and they told them not to say nothing but when they said Willie Johnson Miss Johnson was sitting in a Sunday go to meeting clothes and she just said hallelujah and then they called out Brian Jones and Miss Jones was trying not to get happy. And she said, thank you, Jesus. And for 15 minutes at Tuskegee University, folks start running and shouting and praising God. I want you to look back over your life and think of where God brought you from. And somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Nobody but you.
prestigious sadiddy, all those educated folk, they don't really know how to praise God at national. Well, guess what? If you think that, you lost your mind. We got folk in here with several degrees, but when they think on the goodness of Jesus and all he's done in that life, they got some hurt. I feel a shout in here. We got to get out of here. We got to get, oh my God. All right, that's enough. Don't put no more gravy on it. Don't put no more gravy on it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, don't put no more gravy on it. All right. Them folk with them degrees don't praise the Lord. Them folk with them degrees, they ain't got nothing to praise God for. They got their Mercedes, they got their Gucci, but you don't know like I know. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done in my life. Wait a minute. Come here, sister graduate. Come here, sister graduate. Do you have something to praise God for? Do you have something to praise God for? Throw your hands up and just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Tell him yes. Everybody. Yeah. Come on. they were going to do all this. I didn't know they were going to do all this. God bless you. I want to make this announcement before we go. If you want to be a part of National Church, you say, my, all of this is going on. We're moving forward by the power of God. I want you to come to my right, Dr. Newsom's left, and meet me in this section. If you think you want to be a part of the church, meet me over there. And I'll use the law of persuasiveness because I believe that something good is happening at this church. I want to make a very special announcement and I want everybody to hear me. God bless our online audience and we love you. We celebrate you. We thank God for you. We are always praying for you no matter where you are in the world. Um, one of our councilmen, uh, Brother Randy, is in Aruba this morning and he sent pictures from Aruba today. We're going to remove him from the council. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to change his status. <laughs> he was sipping a virgin pina colada in a... Well, I don't know if it was virgin, but anyway. <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure it was virgin. But he's in Aruba. I don't know where that came from, but anywho, we are so grateful and thankful for our, y'all made me lose my train of thought. But we have a very important 
mandatory membership meeting. Our church is about transparency and it's about openness. And I want you to be in the know. American slavery taught us that if you can keep people ignorant, you can control them. And so we don't adopt to the Willie Lynch theory. We don't adopt to any of the dysfunctionality that we have to keep folk ignorant. So we want everybody to be in the know, engaged and informed. And so on December the 12th at six o'clock, we're going to have a very important strategic meeting for our great church. And I believe that it's all good and it's all God. And so we want you to get every person that is a part of our church. Socially distance, distancing will be observed as we do the business of the Lord. And not only do we do the business of the Lord, but we do the business of loving one another, taking care of one another, and being there for one another. Would you lift your right hand and just thank God for a beautiful service. Did you enjoy it? Were you blessed? Were you favored by God to be here? Are you glad you came? Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for these graduates. Would you point your hand towards them? And would you ask God's blessings and favor and grace to be a part of them as we endeavor to do the great work of God through Jesus Christ. Give us a good week this week. Give us a week full of surprises that are good, blessings that are rich. Give us some good family news. We need a good week and we're thanking you for it in advance. God bless you. Amen. I want to ask you to do something. We're starting our toy donation. Isn't that right, um, Chairman Henderson? Our toy for, for, the, for the next three Sundays, we're bringing in, bring in the PS5, bring in the Xbox X series. <laughs> we're going to give somebody a very Merry Christmas. And so we need everybody to be a part of it. Listen, if you want to be a blessing to our education department, if you were blessed by what you saw, felt, and experienced, I want our ushers to grab an offering basket and I want you to give towards education today. And we're going to make a note of it. I want to make... Dr. Newsom and National Bible College and National Christian Academy flourish. And so they're going to be in the back. If you want to be a blessing to our education ministry, you can do so in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Give somebody a Holy Ghost air fist bump and let them know, thank God for National Church. We're on the move. <laughs>